Today at the Geek Group, we're answering questions about Arduino microcontrollers. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Kidwell. I'm Dan Eakin. Welcome to the Geek Group. Uh, for our last Arduino video, we had several questions that were asked, and we thought we'd spend today addressing some of them. What do you got there, Dan? Well, KIDAS asks, or comments rather, it's a microcontroller, not a microprocessor. The, in, technically, probably. Probably. So, yes, and I, I adjusted my intro to yes. accommodate, but yes, microcontroller is proper. A microcontroller has peripherals built in. A microprocessor is just technically a computer chip itself, usually without memory or A to D converters or serial ports or anything like that. Okay. Um, a microcontroller has all peripherals built in to allow it to be a standalone device. And the AT Mega chips that are used on Arduino processors, or Arduino circuit cards rather, um, fit that bill. Um, they have multiple uh, peripherals built right into the chip. So technically co correct, it is a microcontroller, not a microprocessor. I stand corrected. Thank you, KIDAS. Yes. What else um, you got? Stratos 13 pow asks, uh, are there wireless solutions for the Arduino, and can we do a video on them? And Yes, there are, and yes, we can. Um, we have uh, a prototype shield here that has an expansion port on it. Right there. Yes. And, and it, I don't know if they're going to be able to read it. It says Blue Smurf. Right. Blue Smurf is a Bluetooth plug-in module. It, it fits right there. You just pop it down and you solder it in place and it gives you uh, Bluetooth capacity with so your Arduino. With, this is the SparkFun ProtoShield. So using this, it would just be a matter of putting the shield on and putting your Bluetooth module. As I understand it, the, the Blue Smurf is approximately $50. This, this shield is $14 to $20, depending where you get it from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have this little tag hanging off the back that allows you to just drop. Um, it's got five volts ground, the TX and RX, and then I think there's a, a single I.O. to enable or disable it. So. All right, makes things very convenient then. Um, Jacqueline asks, can we do a robot? Yes, we can. Um, that's one of the things we're work planning on doing. I've been acquiring some parts. Parts is parts. And right here, I have a servo with a little bracket and a ultrasonic transducer and I've actually been writing software to sweep the uh, transducer back and forth and uh, send out pulses to give me range finding so I can have a uh, sonar system. Uh, Don't you have a, another shield to go with that yes, project? Yes, and I have a, uh, this here is a motor shield that allows you to hook in DC motors and stepper motors and servos, actually. These connectors here are actually the outputs that would drive our servos right here, like that. So we need to make a chassis and put an Arduino underneath that and program it. Yep, so we're, we're on our way to making a robot even now. Excellent. And we're being joined by Chris Bowden. Hi. How you doing? Hello, Chris. Hi. Um, and that actually segues us into another question we had. Are we doing a series on this? Yes, we are. We're going to do several, as many as we can think up uh, questions to answer and things to do. So, Rocketman, um, there will be at least eight videos, I think, are planned, although these question and answer segments will add to that considerably by the time oh, we're done, absolutely. I think. Absolutely. So. Um, there was a question from P55CXE9 regarding level shifting serial communications. Ah, yes. And you have a cable for that, don't I you? I have a couple of solutions for that one. Um, this cable here is called an FTDI cable. Um, it has a small circuit card built right into the uh, connector here. And the other end has RXTX ground. Um, it's got a uh, voltage output that you can actually drive your board off of. Sure. And it also has the uh, CTS line for your serial port tied off. This feeds into the automatic uh, or the, uh, the reset pin on an Arduino board to uh, program it. And this cable is specifically for an Arduino Pro, which I had one out here a little bit ago. <laughs> it and I disappeared. Don't know, it disappeared. 
Doesn't the, uh, doesn't the Borduino have an FTDI port Yes, on it? it does. Um, that actually, hold on one second. There's also like circuit card um, examples of this where you have a USB mini connector on one end and your FTDI five pin connector. Yeah, on so the that other. where this would plug in, would you would just plug this module right in. As you can see, they're, they're the same exact thing. Exactly correct. So. And um, what's that look like on the actual the all Arduino right. board? There was a question about us doing a, uh, a Netduino. We forgot the Netduino uh, board. Well, there's yes. so many different variants. Yes, there's more than we have. Um, yes. we, we have quite a few. We don't have them all. Um, one of the boards we missed was an Uno, which is the standard level one to buy now. There's a couple of different versions of it that have a surface mount chip instead of the 28 pin dip. Um, there's other ones that have some extra pins where they're updating the standard. There's a revision three out there now. And the uh, Seed Studio processor, hold on, I'm being interrupted. It's got a panda. Yes, it does. It that is, is a, a panda. Fez panda. It's and a panda. Yes, it does. I just looked down, I was like, there's a panda. There's a panda Look, here. We gotta show people. There's a panda. Yes, that is a Fez Panda. Fez Panda it's 2, right. isn't it? No, this is a Fez Panda 1. Oh, I that's have the a Fez one? Panda 2. Okay. We covered that in the last video. We did. But it's. I'm standard. sure people will ask questions, though. Follows the standard. For, this is the .NET framework board. Which is awesome. Yes. Super easy to work with. Can an Arduino <laughs> stream audio? All right. Yes, an Arduino can stream audio. What is the second part of that question? Can it do it at 128 kbs? Probably not. That's a little <laughs> bit of overkill for the processor that's on an Arduino. It's only 16 megahertz. I mean, that's asking quite a bit out of such a small processor. No. There are other processors that will do better. Um, well, we'll get to those later. The, uh, where'd the Fez go? It's right on the middle. Oh, right there. There. That Fez is running at 75 megahertz. 72? And, or 72, so it's over 70. It's some, 70 something. It's a much faster processor. It has much more capability to do things um, faster and handle higher speed inputs than a standard Arduino processor does. So um, I don't know personally whether you could do it or not. It would be an interesting little experiment to see exactly what the capabilities were. I can honestly say I've never attempted to do anything with audio with one of these, pro these microcontrollers, so. Well, we have done one little project, well, which we'll get to yeah, later. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Um, Mobius One Ace B suggests clear nail polish okay. for some uh, problem yes. with the USB-B connector. The, um, the USB port here is metal. And it is ground. And it is tied to ground. And, and if you have a shield. If you have a shield, let's find The fine. danger shield is big the enough. The danger to... shield. Um, you go to plug in your shield here. It's going to hit. And that button right there is a tie to ground button. So if you got that, that yeah. connector grounded against the back of that button, so it'll... You're, 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 you're jump ring the contacts here with the metal frame of the USB connector. So my solution was to put a piece of electrical tape right over the top. Months and months ago, Chris and I put a lerf on mine to a improve, yeah, that little rubber would, foot. That would, yes, I, I recall what a lerf is. Anyhow, my solution was electrical tape. Sure. Um, his solution was clear um, nail polish. Clear nail polish would work, um, would do fine. Uh, I prefer the electrical tape because I can see it. Clear nail polish. You could totally use like a candy red nail polish to give it. Oh no, like that would work. Racing stripes and stuff. Yes. That would be better than your electrical tape. I imagine, but it I got electrical tape. <laughs> Somebody wants to supply well, me racing with stripes on an Arduino. Okay. Anyways, you want to provide it with <laughs> to me? I'll, I'll I'll do it just for you. I I don't have nail polish. Your girlfriend does. Actually, she hates makeup. Oh, all right. Techno Wizard yes. uh, made a couple comments about uh, proto shields and breadboards and... Oh yes, he asked if there was an old school breadboard like this, a proto shield with the breadboard. And this is SparkFun's example of a proto shield. Yep. They don't come with a breadboard, but you can buy a little breadboard. And they come with double-sided sticky tape on the back and it's very easy to peel the tape off 
and stick it in place. Don't you have an which example? I did. It's like a little hard to see on the video, but I have one in blue here. This is Adafruit's, there's their little logo, Adafruit's Proto Shield, and they have some extra connectors on it as compared to the SparkFun one. But um, I took a blue breadboard and stuck it right on there. So now I can do my prototyping. Now, on you, added, you added these two components here to yes. that shield, right? They have a, the, uh, the prototyping area extends beyond where my uh, breadboard is. So I put some uh, sockets there, and I put a potentiometer. A little 10 turn. 10 turn trim pot. I think it's a 10K in there, so I can use it to adjust things. And I was going to put another one over on this side as well, so I'd have two trim pots off of that connector. But they got a little space for some surface mount prototyping as well on here. Um, I, I can't pronounce it. I, I S A C H A C H. Isaiah I Hawk. I, I don't know. I has probably know. murdered that. Um, he states Spark Fund should be a sponsor. Yes, they should. <laughs> yes, they should. I think they should, and maybe Adafruit as well. I mean, they're both all competitors, of but all of them. But all it's of them. like we'll talk about anybody. I mean, I even got, I even got stuff from Seed Studio in here. It's like I like them all. It's like anybody's got something worthwhile, I'll take a look at it. And you, you apparently and have a, a bit of a fan base. Really? Yep. M O F O Q says I hit like the second I saw Paul. Ah, uh -huh. lovely. <laughs> And that's all I have. Um, let's see. We did have um, somebody made a co the comment about us missing the Netduino. We discussed that a little bit. We discussed it a little. I brought in my Uno. Actually, I stole it off my daughter. That's my daughter's uh, Uno. Um, she uh, plays around with a danger shield. I bought her a danger shield. Um, she likes multicolored LEDs. Sure. So I set her up with a little program. The Danger Shield plugs on to the Arduino. And this is, this is her Arduino and, and her, her shield. her Danger Shield. I swiped it off of her for the... Actually, I... How old little, is she? She is 14 years old. And she's programming Arduinos. She's programming Arduinos. Anyhow, she she's, she's got a uh, tricolor RGB LED that she plugs in over here. Those are the current limiting resistors for it there. And she has some jumpers that go over here. And she's got some software where she can sit and slide the sliders for red, green, and blue and get different colors out of her LED. That's awesome. Yes, I've got her, I bought her a lily, two different versions of a lily pad for e-textiles and all kinds of LEDs and she's getting into making garments with LEDs and electronics on them. There's with a the, uh, huge, huge following for smart clothes. Yes. Ever since that movie, Tron. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's going nuts She's for that working. Stuff. She wants to get like LEDs on her. She's got a little hat and she wants to mount LEDs on it and things like that. And what she was using this for was um, with the tricolor LEDs, she wanted to come up with what shade she wanted to do. And we, sure. I uh, worked with a little piece of software uh, for her that uh, would serial output whatever the slider settings were so she could look at the light and dial things into the color she wanted and then read what the uh, settings were. The values were. So she knew what so to program. So she's using an Arduino to program another Arduino. Exactly. Perfect, awesome. So um, let's see, other processors we have. This is a Borduino. I believe Adafruit uh, markets this one as well. Yep, there's their logo right there. And this is a AT Mega 328. Um, it uses an FTDI cable to program rather than the standard USB. It's this one here, there's a, yes, you could take our little. Um, now you gotta put that on there, the right orientation, otherwise. It's like. It's not that. gonna harm it if you put it on backwards. No, it won't. It won't harm it. It won't harm it, but basically you plug that, then your USB connector would plug in there, or you could just use the standard the cable. FTDI cable. Which is right here. And the idea behind this is, it's got the pinouts spaced to fit a prototyping board. So you can plug it on the little one, or yeah, you have your big one here. You got the big one. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Paul. There. So there you can plug an Arduino down on, if I can get it flat, on a prototyping board, and go ahead and then jump your circuits in right off of there. Um, when I'm doing this, I generally put the thing way down at the end. 
Yeah, you lose a lot of input because your your, your board oh, is covering. Want, I don't want that hanging off the edge, but the first pin is like way down here. Right. So I put that flush so you got the power connector right there. Yeah, easy to There's get There's another version of this where rather than the power connector here, and or rather than the FTDI cable, it has an actual USB port, um, so you don't need the FTDI cable. But I'm fonder of using the FTDI connection because uh, then I can hook it into other things without having to figure out a level shifting serial port or something like that. Um, I also have a uh, Sanguino, which is another version of an AT Mega chip. It uses a AT Mega 644P. It's the one of the larger chips that's still a dual inline through hole style chip rather than a surface mount. And this one also is laid out with its pins. So you can get, this is a uh, 0.6 wide chip uh, breadboard. And this will fit right on here. So you can do breadboarding with a 644 chip. And this was purchased for me to develop other processors on, yep. actually. Um, We've, um, the company I work for, I was using Rabbit processors to do a lot of things and they're rather expensive and bulky. And uh, they're much larger than an AT Mega chip. So we were doing serial communications with uh, automotive components like uh, the window motor on a car door now has a serial link that you need to talk to to tell it to go up and down or to tell it that it's all right to listen to the inputs from the switches. And I came up with this board here. Now that's a 644P surface mount. That's a 644P surface mount processor. It's got uh, eight outputs going through a Darlington driver right there to eight pins over here. It has, the 644 has an eight input A to D converter. So those inputs are wired through to the other set of eight pins over here. This little six pin is power and ground. Um, the chip right here is for LIN bus, which it's local interconnect network or something like that. It's an automotive acronym. Um, that pin is brought out to this connector and I can tie this into a car door and um, send window up and window down commands. Um, there's a, uh, I should plug that in. Tell you what, we'll come back to this. I got something neat that this one will do. Excellent. Um, we expand it even farther. So this is the same, this is the same layout almost. It's just got a little extra on it. From here over is identical on both boards. Sure. Again, 644 processor. Um, I used a 595 uh, serial in parallel out chip to drive my um, uh, Darlington driver here. Uh, that freed up input so I could do some other things with it. Uh, one is I have a CAN controller chip on here, so this board will do a CAN interface, um, which CAN was another serial interface for automotive uh, purposes developed by Bosch ages ago. They have a two-wire version, they have a one-wire version, and then they have a fault-tolerant version, and I have the driver chips on here for all three different versions of CAN. And we're using these, um, let's see, uh, to uh, run uh, power seats for Tesla motors, actually, in their uh, testing uh, and assembly process. Yep. Um, and then I came up with yet another one. Um, let's and see. this is this is a, a good chance to explain to uh, that YouTube poster. This is where I watch. That's what his name was. Just how diverse these things can be. Oh yes. Because your daughter is making clothing, and we're testing we're, automotive parts. We're testing parts. automotive parts. Yep. Um, I don't really want to discuss what we're testing with this one, but <laughs> I had to add a um, a 16-bit A to D converter. This little guy right here is it's four differential inputs. 16-bit A to D converter, so we can get a real nice, precise voltage measurement. Um, and it will span automotive voltages. It'll go from negative 16 to positive 16 volts. So it covers everything we're going to see in a car. And the rest of the board is the same as the other three. It's like I came up with the first design and then expanded on it a couple of times. Sure. 
And then the, the last one I have to show you, I don't know if we're I don't think it's going to fit on the, yeah. Okay, again, I don't want to get into exactly what we're doing with this, but there was a need to have multiple pulse width modulation inputs. I'm going to hold it up for this camera here. So it's real easy to have multiple pulse width modulation outputs. It's a little difficult to have multiple pulse width modulation inputs. They're usually interrupt driven, and if you have one or two, that's fine, but if you have 10, that's a problem. So what we did was we took an Arduino Pro and rubber stamped it out 10 times on the board. And then and in the quarter here, we put an 11th one. We tied all 10 together on those two lines with uh, an I2C bus. Right. And then the 11th processor is used as an interface through an FTDI cable to go off to a PC. So we basically... Um, paralleled up the processors here, so we're running 11 processors on one board. Um, How many I.O. did it end up being? Oh, 96? something along those lines. It's like the connectors you see here are the A to D converter inputs and the pulse width. There's a pulse width modulation input and output from each processor. Right. So each one is six A to D inputs plus a pulse width modulation in and out times 10. So you have 60 A to D inputs on this board. Actually, 66, because I, I echoed on the, the chip serving as the uh, Can server. Can we pick up I.O. from these headers over here, too? Yep. These are the uh, ISP programming headers on the board. Right. And when you're not programming, they're available as I.O. pins. So that's the reset, a ground uh, uh, VCC, and then three I.O. pins. Excellent. So we have uh, 33 I.O. pins on the board as well. Um, these headers here are for FTDI programming of the processor. When we're not programming, there's two more pins available. Excellent. As well. So I think that addresses all the questions people had for us. I think it does, and we've covered all the additional Arduino-based or AT-Mega-based processors we have to talk about. Um, if somebody wants to send us a Netduino, we'll... Give it a little discussion <laughs> happy to, as well. Be happy, happy to, to go over it for people happy if to somebody play with donates. It. Yeah. Yes. But um, I think that's all for today. So I'm Paul Kidwell. I'm Dan Eakin. Please remember to rate, subscribe, comment, and donate to The Geek Group at thegeekgroup.org. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.